Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And right now, we have international stakes. The American economy was a system of endless prosperity and potential insofar as President Wallace was concerned. With the American people behind him, he knew that his work had been that of a guarantee for the people of the U.S. to feel the full effect of his work to grow the economy. However, much to the chagrin of this president, Treasurer Wilbur Mills had asked to interrupt the end of the day for the president with talks of domestic product. You see, Mr. President, there's just some inherent concerns regarding the possibilities of agreements that may occur at the conference, sir. Already, Mills was using too many words for the hour it was at night. <clears throat> Look, Wilbur. As far as I'm concerned, the population of the U.S. has done an excellent job within the frame of my presidency in producing exceptional results in regard to the strength of the economy. Sure, the OFM, nations, uh, may come together to agree on a few limitations regarding the potential of trade, but what does that matter? Wallace barked. Well, Mr. President, the economic interests of the nations that have reserved a potential seat at the conference have all portrayed a common element. <clears throat> that being... A direct escalation on importation of goods from the markets. That being said, it is a matter of concern both economically and politically, Mills said. Wallace took a moment to pause upon hearing his advisor. What do you mean politically, Mills? Wallace said, slowly approaching his advisor. Well, sir, Mills said, the far right branch of the MPP is fervent about the maintenance of a free and competitive domestic market for the United States. Furthermore, with a direct sense of pride emanating from the far right, they may become perturbed if they happen to notice an influx of foreign goods enter the market, especially men of the big businesses who will attempt to fight any entrance of non American non-profitable goods into the market. <clears throat> as much as Wilbur had infuriated the president by delaying a potential good night of rest, President Wallace had to admit that his treasurer had made some valid points in regards to the political and economic status of the country. That being said, we'll give in enough just to make them happy. Uh, uh, do we want to anger these people? We'll, just, we'll give in enough just to make them happy. I think that'd be okay. I, I don't know. I just, I'm not too concerned about that stuff. I'm more concerned about the economy and at least holding on to 50 seats in the Senate. That's really my main goal here, so... All right, so I mean, also off screen, I did click on increase NPP unity. So worried for anything? American society is united, especially after yesterday's uh, videos concerning me uh, reforming education. We'll say so. A lot of these are actually RDs. I know there's some NPP here. Actually, there's quite a bit of NPP. So, uh, so we'll see what happens. The Great Lakes. I'm a little worried about the Great Lakes. We'll do it one more time with the Great Lakes. And after that, probably no more. Uh, let's see, happy, unhappy. He's balanced the needs of the worker and them. And we're obviously not doing anything there, which is totally okay. Cool. Very, very cool. Iraq, uh oh. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's really not good. Ooh, oh, good. Let's gauge Indian interest. That'd be good. Um, Operational success is good. Let's see what we can do about this. America, can we do anything here? No. Iraq, uh, we might want to wait. Um, how, can I help any of you guys? Yeah, with oil crisis happening in July, uh, that's not very good for anybody here. No, it doesn't look like it. Oil crisis erupts. Well, oh, crap. Well, that's not good. Oh, look at all this. The trade was done. Oh, God. That is not ideal. How's the economy looking, though? Three. Oh, boy. Cut that down. There you go. We're so, we're so good. Oh, boy. Well... We'll see. It's almost August. At least let's get through this. Oh, did we did it? Okay, cool. So, the burn of rejection. President Wallace has been going over the trade analyses all day, combined with reviewing the brief history of diplomatic action taking place between a wealth of countries, which suddenly turned heel to become interested in a pact with the U.S. <clears throat> In other words, President Wallace had been begging for a distraction from the mess of paperwork on his desk. However, the sudden slamming of the three knocks against his door knocked the president off guard at the sudden answering to his request. Come in, yelled the president. Uh, J. William Fulbright rushed in, approaching the desk with a handing a statement to the president. You're going to want to read this over, sir, to George Wallace, president of the U.S. Your proposed trade or proposal to unite the nation surrounding the Japanese sphere of influence is as respectable as it is outreaching for your country. Throughout the co-prosperity sphere, innumerable cases of suffering produced from the actions of the Japanese military and government have occurred, and it's unfortunate to have them bear witness to these atrocities at such a close distance as the Indian government must. However, an escalation of conflict with the Empire of the Japanese would produce a subsequent, subsequent conflicts with the people of India in front in such occurrences. Such a possibility is not within the grasp of the Indian nation's interests, and a coalition of economic value in an effort to bring together the nations or the members of the 
OFN, possibly resorting to a loss of profit in an already ailing global economy, would produce suffering for a great number of the Indian population. We simply cannot allow the risk to disrupt our promises to the Indian people of a free and independent future with such ties, and thus we will not be attending the conference according to at Perth, nor the results of such a conference. With peace and prosperity in mind, the gover government of the Indian nation. Gosh darn it, another frontline loss, Wall said, flinging the piece of paper across the desk. I want to bring it up to you as soon as I received it, sir, to make sure you knew. Fulbright said before being interrupted by, uh, with Wallace saying, It's all right, Fulbright. You did your job fine. Go back to make sure the rest of the nation will be in attendance, right? Don't want to lose any more profitable countries like this from the deal. Fulbright nodded his head sl silently before exiting the room. Oh, well. That sucks. Economic aid for India? Wallace has already been eager, eagerly awaiting the State Department's proposal for an economic assistance package for India. And the finished proposal on his desk was indeed jaw-dropping. India was a crown jewel of his proposal to get a trade pact to link the free economies of Asia together, but that would come with a price and nearly exorbitant one. Unlike Australia or Central America, India remains a desperately poor country with a population more than double the U.S. and no existing American corporate presence. It makes sense as a desperate need for infrastructure or the dearth of local private capital to fund it, leaving the massive bill squarely with the American government and taxpayer. Wallace could hear the pundits screaming for blood when he faced with the potential of winning India's participation in the Perth Agreement, and yet successfully surrounding Japan would be an undeniable strategic victory. Anything for victory. The machine falters. Like any engine worth its name, the American economy functions on a continuous flow of oil. It's bitumen. Paying the country with many thousands of miles of highways, petrols, kerosene, and diesel fuels, and trucks, planes, uh, ships, and cars transferring money and goods across city to city. It's naphtha, and gas composed many chemicals and heat many homes. Whether from the ridges off the Louisiana coast to the bountiful wells in the Arabian Peninsula, cheap oil is a linchpin keeping the world's strongest economy from the going from the bottom up. Then one sunny day in the, in the turn of the decade, oil prices quadrupled to 12 bucks a barrel. And like an engine with neither duplicate nor fuel, the world's strongest economy sputters into a sudden stop. Pandemonium strikes Wall Street's floors as indexes dovetail past their troughs. With no sign of slowing down, let alone stop, and Main Street fares a little better, look only at the miles on cars outside gas stations across the country, flows awaiting shipments from fuel that will never come. As conflagrations spark abroad, the crisis that they have brought to American shores have skyrocketed the price of goods while simultaneously keeping people from earning money for them. For them, in other words, a cataclysm poised to stunt even reverse a decade of growth. America turns desperately to Capitol Hill for an answer to the world's first ever oil shock. Congress turns desperately to the White House for a solution to a quandary that evades modern economic thought. The book now landed on the resolute desk. When and how shall its occupant respond? The president wonders, as the people do as well. All right, a little bit of a crisis. All right, we still keep going, could do the Perth conference, but but not all is well right now. So running on fumes. To say that the oil recent the recent oil crisis has thrown a wrench into our economy is a vast understatement. Much like a well-functioning machine, the U.S. economy is heavily reliant on a steady supply of petroleum to work efficiently. While oil reserves exist in states like California and Texas. It simply is not enough to provide for the ever-growing needs of our population. The recent economic malaise of the past few decades is still fresh in the minds of America, and as such, preventing another potentially worse crisis is paramount to our survival. A presidential task force will be formed to secure new sources of oil, calm down internal strife, and apply a handful of administrative measures to resolve this issue. We can survive anything the world throws at us. <clears throat> I'll probably be setting the price next. Yeah, let's go and do that one. Opportunistic businessmen have already implemented our outrageous prices on the cost of gasoline and oil-related products. This cannot stand. Effective immediately, the federal government will implement wide-reaching price controls and permit an efficient system of enforcement to ensure that no ludicrous pricing slips through the cracks. While the less ethical viewpoint of this crisis will be less would be to sustain profit, we must ensure affordability for the common consumer. Price controls will also help us slow down our soon to increase inflation rate and provide some more stability in the local markets. Those who are looking to personally profit off such a disastrous crisis must be restricted and trap the errors of the ways for the good of the nation. Very, very good. Cool. Put that down, cut that down. My goal is still to get down to no debt. I don't care what it costs. And we're still like building at least one? No, we're not. Okay. Um, I'll put you at the bottom then. Cool. Already he's run a masterful campaign. Hopefully they don't do that well, but we'll see what happens. A couple comments to go through as well, though. Let's see. Anything here? Oh, intelligent analysis. Good. Oh, we'll get that too. Let's see. Charles Manchin should be the leader of the American Bur Burgundy Party or Burgundian System Party. Oh, nice. Good job, guys. I saw that MPP campaign. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. That'd be kind of cool. I think we read about him last time. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. Okay. The Federal Energy Office. 
Our current and past administrations have not had any dedicated resources to meet with the energy requirements of the country. With the current crisis in full swing, this can no longer stand through an executive order and hopefully action from the legislative branch, we can create an agency that is responsible for managing as well as allocating our supply of electricity, collect information on the power and needs of America, coordinate foreign policy measures to keep our trade of natural resources which can produce energy and regu can regulate prices. While the office will, of course, increase efficiency and scope within time, representing becoming a fully-fledged cabinet-level department one day, their efforts will now help manage the crisis to a point where it does not strain an unprepared bureaucracy. Not bad. The earth bleeds. The horrible fighting has begun again. Beneath the shifting sands of the Middle East, oil pumps like blood through the veins of some slumbering primordial deity. Proboscoid derricks pierce the sediment of their hundreds, gluttonously sucking up the earth's bounty to feed the whole the world's limitless thirst for petroleum. It is strange, absurd even to think that the most viable commodity in the world, and indeed the grease that spins today's cogs, are little more than the corpses of prehistoric flora. And yet, every day America burns through uncountable tons of this ancient biomass without which our nation would grind to a screeching halt. Perhaps the only the thing in the Middle East older than the land itself as a people. They wandered the sands for thousands of generations before each city, and will surely do so again after the fall of the last. Entrenched in their ancient ways, they fought and married each other for a millennia, and the evening never or evening, and the never ending dance of civilization. And every so often, as the years ground by, the cradle of humanity exploded into sudden and ferocious violence. Once more blood is spilled on the sand under the Italian boot for decades, the Arabs have risen up to form the nascent United Arab Republic, untainted and expelling the foreigners from their homeland taking claim of their own destiny. As the Italians desperately try to stop the spread of rebellion, the Saudi king watches from Riyadh, Riyadh, perhaps seeing his opportunity to, grab, to grip the region in an iron fist. Our diplomatic staff, terrified of the distant explosions and gunfire they, hear, they can hear from their offices, have been sending in frantic reports on the escalating crisis. Reading between the lines, the central message is clear. Our oil supply is threatened. The situation appears bleak. America may soon find itself deprived of oil unless we act, soon and decisively. As the Middle East embroils itself in bloodshed, the policymakers in Washington debate what, what action to take, and our men in the Middle East are airlifted to safety. One thing is for certain. It's happening again. The wheels of ages turns once more. We lose a lot of political power and stability, but we built up such a nice little cushion of political power that I don't really care. Cool. Is there still no way we can help out here? Because I, I really want to help out. Gosh darn it. That sucks. That really, really, really sucks. And we almost have no ability to cut down the debt. Almost none. Look at that. Polls are updated. Great. All right. What can we do here? The East Coast. Oh, man. That's not looking good for us at all. Great Lakes. Hey, MPP victory. Torts tells one. MPP victory is likely. MPP's victory is likely. Great Plains. Well, the Great Plains. MPP Center. Democratic Party. Toss up. Let's do Great Plains then. I want to make sure that we're pretty much not necessarily guaranteed a victory in some places, but, you know. I want to make sure we can do a lot. Eh, you might as well do some light stealth air technology stuff. Get some more jet cast. We got enough for the future, which is good. And I... If, I remember correctly, someone did say, like I said in the last video, we want to help out the Democratic Iranians, but we're going to set the prices and then do the Federal Energy Office, which would be probably, hopefully, a good, good thing. Yeah, oil crosses, not good. Not good at all. I wonder who we're going to elect in 1972. Kind of interesting. Anything else up here? Uh, America. I'd love to decrease the ability of other people to do stuff over there. So nothing over there, which is kind of strange. Fun Korean resistance, why not? Capitals commodities. Wall Street is the heart of the American economy. Today, it's be beating harder than ever. Turmoil erupted on the trading floor after our plan to set prices and oil became public, and what can only be described as mass hysteria ensued. Or ensued as traders followed the trail of current events to the ongoing crisis in the Middle East, realizing the, the way the wind was blowing. Thankfully, it proved to be a minor hiccup, and the chaos on the trading floor quickly died down. Despite the initial hullabaloo, setting prices on oil has allowed us to maintain control of Wall Street and keep the market relatively stable, averting the economic disaster. Many of our advisors, excuse me. Many of our advisors were certain it was an imminent. Of course, it made a lot of people angry. Commodities traders, in particular, are unsurprisingly furious about the anger of the gang of hair gelled, smooth talking champ champagne drinkers at a small price to pay to avoid economic meltdowns. Sell, 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 sell. Good. Everything's big in Texas. Texas is one of the largest producers of crude oil in the world. Despite this fact, it's not enough to keep up with the needs of the domestic oil use. Although there are already plenty of corporations drilling for oil in the area, it's not enough. We need to just encourage existing drillers to expand, new drillers to set up rigs, and subsidize their businesses so they don't immediately go under from the weight of their expenses. However, hopefully, with all this initiative going forward, Texas oil will heat homes during winters in New Jersey, power trucks on interstate highways in Utah, and keep industries running in Florida long enough for us to all sort this thing out. I guess Florida doesn't have any natural oil reserves? I thought they did. I'm sure it's not nearly as much as like California and Texas, because California does produce a lot of oil, but Texas does as well. Can we open up like Alaska or anything like that, or you know, maybe even the Dakotas? I think North Dakota had some oil, but then again, 
I think that's more like modern times. Hey, you know what? Improved oil processing? That's exactly what we could use right now. Let's grab some improved rubber processing too. Nice. Cool. I just don't want to lose. Oh, crap. A calamitous camp. Guys, come on, man. The Rockies? Oh, boy. Even the West Coast. I just hope we can get keep somewhat of a majority. Whew. Oh, Great Plains. Yeah, Great Plains, not too bad. Well, it's a toss-up. MPP victory is likely. Toss-up. MPP victory. I think I might go... If the Rockies aren't possible to do... Um, maybe East Coast. That might be actually okay to do then. It's likely, likely, likely. Maybe not. Oh, God dang it. Why do people like Republicans so much? And Democrats... We just had a good time with everyone here, that's all. Oh, man, it's looking good. Hmm. RD, RD, RD. Leaning RD. Well, maybe do the rock is likely, likely. Tilt. Leaning. Leaning. Well, I'll do East Coast, why not? I mean, we're, we're pretty much united, so. Help these guys out, maybe? Yep, yeah, that'd be good. Nice. Cool. Cause we we have so much naval XP, but we can't use it to do naval adoption stuff, which is kind of odd to me. But whatever. And force rationing. Despite creating efficient uh, efficiency bottlenecks, enforcing strict price controls, and increasing our immediate as well as future supply of oil, it's not a simple. It's not. It's not much. Simply not enough. This is a full-blown national emergency, and as such, we have to enforce rationing on our markets. Our system can't work as well as it's able to if our supply of oil isn't evenly spread. Businesses, private citizens, or agencies hoarding supplies or gasoline, or of crude price, oil prices, supplies, or crude oil supplies, is simply unacceptable. We have a responsibility to ensure that an even supply spread, perhaps even implementing ration cards and expanding the powers of the Federal Energy Office, to punish those who do not comply. A thinly spread supply of oil is better than no oil for some, like, as it goes. Cool. Good. <clears throat> and also have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm, but once we read the synthetic alternative. Recent advances in technology and scientific research has offered potentially breakthroughs in alternative f supplies of fuel. Although existing technology has already exist existed and it was implemented by the Germans during the Second World War, it is now at a point where it is efficient and advanced enough to contribute to civilian supplies of fuel. Experts and cabinet advisors are skepti skeptical about the short-term application of subsidizing such an experimental process, given that the scale it would be implemented on is mild at best. However, with time and enough funds thrown their way, we're sure that a stable supply of synthetics will be at the very least reduce the negative impacts of future energy crisis. Let's send a stimulus package to these scientists and industrious as well as officially support their efforts so that perhaps we have alternatives to rely upon a few years from now. Which would be a good thing. Oh, God, I don't want to see this. Uh, okay, look at that. Republicans and Democrats got up to 20 each? We still have 54. Okay. I was a little worried about that, so, <clears throat> all right, all right, not too bad. Maybe, you know what, at this point, we're going to incur a little bit more debt. we got to spend some more money, so, it costs too much for us to really do this, but, hey, I love this. Now, cut down on the Democrats. We hemorrhaged just, we didn't really hemorrhage anything, we just lost a few, so, we lost four, and five MPP centers, whatever. Literally, they just went straight to the Democrat and Republican Party, huh? The center went to the Republican Party. The far right went to the Democrat Party, which makes sense. So, uh, let's see. Last receipt to the Republicans, West Coast. Actually, yeah, uh, we can probably close this out so we don't have to see this stuff anymore. We're going to incur a little bit more debt, but by the end of the campaign, we should have zero debt, hopefully. So, no, so we lost Texas completely. George H. W. Bush. Oh God, look at Indiana. Look at Illinois. Look at Wisconsin. Il Iowa. Yeah. Oh, uh, the solid South is no longer solid. It's more like the solid Midwest. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more. Uh, Oregon. We love Oregon. Disaster averted? Throughout all of our efforts, we're still starting to see minuscule signs of recovery. Despite there still being lo long lines of gas stations, a lack of supply in some areas, and a general slowdown of the entire economy, things are beginning to turn to normal. Many policy experts and key figures in our administration are confident that the worst is over. Despite the crisis still being in full swing, it is at least starting to slow down on the home front, with the economy showing signs of life again. We can now return to approaching our domestic agenda without fear of the entire country imploding in on itself from a lack of fuel. As we remember the impacts of this crisis and the, subs the consequences of past losses on American consciousness, we can now steadily move forward to a safe and secure future, one where the public is protected from emergencies and the American dream can still survive against overwhelming odds. Very, very good. Build, 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 everyone. Oh, crap. We're spending money we can't even build. We gotta ramp up production. I don't care what it costs. We gotta build. 
Okay, there we go. Build, 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 build for a while. And then we'll cut it down again eventually. Republicans and Democrats? Nope. Cool. Political land side. Yep. We're still united. After this, let's do the birth conference. Uh, no, I want to do <clears throat> gauge oceanic interest. I'll do this stuff. But we literally just won, so uh, let's do let's do these two, and then we'll do that one maybe. Also, we can do some of this stuff. Hmm. But God, back in schools, I would like to get down to j that one, the cl crutch. This stuff is cool and all, but now, yeah. gauge oceanic interest. The Empire of Japan's rampage across the Pacific before, during, and after the Second World War left countless of nations bruised, bloody, and broken, <clears throat> with no one left to turn to. These nations were first in having to succumb to the coercion wrought by the Japanese now after years of the suffering. Countries like Australia and New Zealand could finally find the strength to turn towards a larger power to help them fight against Japanese influence, the U.S. <clears throat> the administration will send multiple nations to these countries in an effort to offer subsidization in their steps forward while also encouraging new and empowering trade deals between the U.S. and their governments. As far as our work has produced, these countries appear to be the most sympathetic to our nation's cause after the suffering and is the government's greatest influence to secure allies in the face of the dangerous empire of the East. Negotiate the terms. Oh! We'll do that one, that one, that one, that one, and... Ooh. Interesting. Negotiate the terms. Indian market. Oh, we can do that one, but let's do that one first. Momentary embolism. Lumen disaster has been avoided for now, and oil flows again freely through America's veins thanks to our oil rationing and price setting and the expansion of our domestic petroleum industry. Now our citizens can once again drive to their dead-end jobs and heat up their TV dinners without fear of impediment. And you know what? Thank goodness for that, because without oil, America would come apart like a house of cards in a tropical typhoon. Nevertheless, we can't let ourselves become complacent. The turmoil in the Middle East doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon, and although the brunt of the crisis has been averted for the time being, if the violence escalates, we can expect a similarly chaotic impact on America's markets. Our oil supplies are already stretched pretty far, and worse it gets, the more draconian a response will have to be just to keep the wheels spinning. Frankly, the reports coming in from our men from the Middle East are getting bleaker by the day. Oil distribution is far from secure, and it appears as if none of the players have the power to end this conflict quickly. Most worryingly, we've received a report from the CIA about several UAR nations joining into a single political entity. But who's to say it's accurate? All kinds of rumors are pouring in, and it's getting more and more difficult to separate the truth from the baseless gossip. Right now, there's no way to tell which way the wind is blowing, and that kind of uncertainty isn't good for anyone. We'll have to wait and see, but at least for it seems the worst has been avoided for now. Back to normal and back to the Italian peninsula. Oil prices have finally fallen from their peak after the vast, fast, panicking action from Washington that crashed its immediate days, once growing to exponential highs. They now begin their slow yet inexorable decline to bearable lows. It may take years before they finally return to normal, if they ever return, of course, but America sighs a breath of relief regardless. It's people, knowing that they can finally go back to work and pay reasonably for their essentials, and it's government, knowing it can finally look outwards to address the oil shock's root cause. Many can reasonably point to Italy's crumbling empire in the Middle East as point zero of the world's markets world market's newest growing pain. Their inability to contain or at least moderate the Arab people's unrest has caused wave after wave of disruption to the world's largest supplier of the sweet crude oil. A sizable faction within the government crumble if America's resources are better served, hastening the ailing empire's decline. Seeing as Italy is now an OFN member state, Washington has decided that supporting its newfound ally, weakening grip over Arabia is the surest way to stabilizing a stabilizing global oil supply. They all even proponents of pro-Italian intervention are divided over its extent. Whether over of military action or covert black operations best complement Rome's own efforts, the President of the United States has resolved this, this dilemma by vacillating between sides until the Pentagon can provide a clear assessment of the Middle East situation as is. Italy and her oil will be safe, and it seems like we have another crisis on our hands, hopefully, maybe. Uh, El Duce's disaster company man. Uh, girls a little more unified in the Naples conference. Bail them out, Schwarzkopf's plan, Italian desk, cool the lead, taking back their empire, peace in her time, or strangle the Saudis, sun never rises, start a fire, send support to Italy, Operation Checkmate, subvert the Panera, Panarabists, seen as the right idea, far as we could do that, you know what, instead of that, I'll, we'll do this in a little bit, I want to beeline this way, put God back in schools. Our predecessors have purged American schools of two vital qualities that make them great. Segregation and the Christian faith. Brown v. Board, Angle v. Vitale, Abington School District v. Shemp. All these rulings by our Burgund burgundy bribe courts have undermined our educational system and threatened our children's future. Our school children may be divided by color, but they are truly united in prayer today. God and America's children are going to return to their rightful place segregated school districts. 
President Walsh, we'll embark on a speaking tour of Southern high schools, alongside sympathetic Christian leaders like Jerry Falwell, Bob Jones Sr., Pat Robertson, and A.W.A. Crisis, or Craswell, <laughs> Crisis, Craswell. Wallace will expound on the importance of our Savior and our traditional domestic institution to America's youth. He shall swear to them upon Scripture itself that he will protect the integrity of the schools and lead them to a bright future. Yeah, I think going down this way would probably be okay for now, but... And encourage patriotic curriculum. The world is a harsh one, especially for the children. They should be thanking God every night for the fact that they are born in the good old USFA. We have shown to them just how lucky they are. We have to make sure that schools are teaching the good, wholesome facts of American history and none of that good-for-nothing, great, fascist propaganda. Can't wait. All right, so can we do anything here yet? Nope. In here? Nope. Uh, what is this? Diminish the power of the NSDAP. Towards the opposition? Sure, why not? It's probably a waste to do this, but it's fine, whatever. Yep, they don't really need to see us anymore, so. Cool. And there's nothing we can do here, too. Put God back in schools, you betcha. And then, I encourage you to follow the southern states. Prison Walls believes in states' rights. A state should be able to make their own decisions, especially when it comes to an issue of importance as segregation. That said, a southern model has proven itself time and time again as the most effective model for the American people. Prison Walls encourages the states of this great union to adopt the system of separate but equal treatment in all regards, but most importantly, education. Are the children not our future? Oh, that's, that's quite a few days. Oh, oh yeah, and this one, the, com the commies might say that starts our education, but <clears throat> a more patriotic population is always better. Dixie will love it. Cool. By God in heaven. Wallace and LeMay sat apart from another in uh, the Oval Office, both staring at the same set of reports that had come in this morning from the communications office. The report showed a detailed graph of a continuously rising line only to begin tapering off. Popular support as measured within Louisiana, the next one South Carolina, then Georgia, Florida, and all the same decline. Bad word, President Wallace said. He rocketed from the chair across from LeMay. Gosh darn, what do we do now? He boomed into the room. Well, sir, the reports don't necessarily sign a death warrant for us yet, he said. As Wallace turned to his vice president, what do all these states have in common, he asked, as he took a Bible out from the president's desk. The presentation was about to begin in Madison County High, <clears throat> near Jackson, Mississippi. The governor of Mississippi, a Baptist pastor, and thousands of people behind him gathered to try to capture and witness a mysterious event. The governor stood up to the podium, announcing to the crowd, Good afternoon to the great and powerful citizens of Alabama. President Wallace has decided to renew his duties as president to the people of Mississippi. President Wallace and Pastor Martin, the pastor and the president, and the president both stepped forward towards the microphone as Wallace laid his hand upon the time of the Bible. President George Corley Wallace Jr., do you swear by the Christian God that you will uphold your duties as president of the United States? The pastor asked. I do, the president said, as some found it hard to contain their applause. Do you... President Wall swear to God by God to maintain a firm and powerful hand against the powers which seek to undo our God given freedoms. I do. There are those in this country that stand to undo our freedoms and I will not bow to them. It sounds like he's getting married. The cheers grew stronger. Will you use the powers vested in you by the Constitution to uphold traditional or tradition and morality in a corrupt and dangerous age? I do, Pastor Martin. In fact, I swall swear, not only by God, but by each and every one of you that I will shut that I'll fight for your rights, your freedoms. I'm no limp spine politician. I'm a believer in God and in this country. If you want segregation, you have you will have segregation. You are Americans, and and uh, darker skinned folks will not go where you say not to. <clears throat> the citizens gathered, abandoned. The citizens gathered, abandoned their respectful silence to collapse in a fervent applause and cheers for the president of the United States as he stood strong, with his hands gripping the Bible at the point. They ate it up, and Wallace voter base will be more content with the state of states' rights, or maybe should I say the level of states' rights. Manhattan marches, Wallace wails. Oh, crud. Oh, look, a bill. Flashes of the streets of Manhattan grace the president's and all right bird's eyes. There they saw the wealth of marches, each screaming and waving signs around the downfall of the American education system and calling President Wallace the child-hating monger of the president. After Ward's images flipped to these protesters clashing with New York City police officers. Exchanging blows as bricks and batons go flying. Bird, what the bad word is happening down there? Why is Manhattan burning to the bad word ground as we speak? Wallace demanded. Well, sir, you see, the situation is fairly complicated, Bird responded, being met with a frank no crap from the president. During the successes of your presidency, as well as some of the possible missteps, the party's been expanding in different parts as well. In particular, some folks of the Republicans and the CNPP who are, share some similarly radical views, calling themselves the LNPP, are protesting the recent reforms of the education system. Well, also, draw jaw nearly hit the floor. You're telling me that these mad dudes can't change and learn a little bit about how good they have it in this gosh darn country? What's so bad about having the guts to say that it's the Japanese who need to get bombed next or they're going to get pissed off to learn how we have some patriotic state-driven backgrounds? Bad word, the president screamed, kicking his chair over an angry situation in Manhattan. Bird, you gotta make sure to deploy every unit you have in your sleeve to New York, alright? I do not want this movement gaining traction. They'll try to run us into the ground if they see any more from this this crap. This uh, The president stammered right out. Right away, sir. As Bird was preparing to do as he was ordered, he froze, sat, uh, froze alongside the president as the song coming from the TV sets to the protesters. 
What'd you learn in school today, you dear little boy, mom? What'd you learn in school today, dear little little boy, mom? I learned that Washington never told a lie. I learned that soldiers seldom die. I learned that everyone everyone's free, and that's what the teacher told me. And that's what I learned in school today. And that's what I learned in school. They'll learn more. They keep going like this. Operation success, which is good. And uh, I really just want to see if we can. Oh, analysis and Southeast Asia. Sure, why not? TV to Nat. This is Howard Rang of the NBC Natly News, joined by several leading congressmen along with the faces of the RD's presidential race. How are you gentlemen doing tonight? The newscaster said, sitting ac across from the political giants Barry Goldwater and John Glenn. Well, good evening, Mr. Rang. Sir Glenn, it is a pleasure for Mr. Goldwater and myself to appear tonight for people across the country. I agree, John. It's a blessing to appear, upon, uh, appear to my fellow Americans. Indeed, gentlemen, on that note, tonight you asked me to speak about the actions of President Wallace. Is that correct? Ray continued. Absolutely, sir. You see my Democratic constituents and I'll have Notice a theme of President Wallace's presidency, a distinct turn towards radical notions to attempt to force freedom rather than guarantee it. Goldwater said to continue, The Republicans have felt continuously disconnected from President Wallace, sir. Just this past week, he unleashed fury to the people of Mississippi, riling everyone up without uniting the divide. It's not right to see the people rage against one another over school kids, Glenn continued. Now, if I may ask, have you seen this anger first hand in the American pop people? Ray gasped, Unfortunately, whether you are Democrat, Republican, or even a member of the MPP, it has become evident that Wallace has unleashed his anger of this anger across the U.S. in order to maintain segregation and in the process has undone his guarantees of freedom for his party's goals, Goldwater stated. Now, gentlemen, while I do not wish to invalidate your points, what are the possible merits found within the actions of the president? asked the newscaster. So, Mr. Goldwater, and I have realized a grave matter that appears to have been lost to many supporters of the President Wallace administration. We are an American people, be it conservative or liberal, facing a world of crisis and scorn of difficulty and suffering. And President Wallace's administration has decided that to solve these issues, he will bar children from schools. Glenn finished. John is right. Differences aside, the Republican and Democratic parties recognize that radicalism is not the path to follow to guarantee the strength of the U.S. of America. Goldwater concluded, Thank you, gentlemen. We here at NBC appreciate your output and hope to serve to educate the pe American people more than ever before. This has been the NBC Nightly News, and this is Howard Ray signing up. The time to turn the volume up. They grow more unified. Well, that's not for them, but I don't know how many people trust the RDs right now. But happy 1971, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Now let's go up to this. Why not? Low noise amplification. How bad is the debt? 14. Yeah, that's not too bad. Oh, national debt. Yeah, that's not bad. That's really bad. Oh, the growth rate got hit by 1.1%. Eh, could be worse. Keep building them civvies, boys. We need more civvies. I encourage you to follow the Southern States next, which is hopefully good. Hopefully we can get involved more in the Middle East. We'll see what happens. I would love to send volunteers, especially to Iran, but we'll see what happens. Oh, they got, there's got one down here. Oh, look at that. There goes Yemen. Bye, Yemen. Led by Laya Farko. Fakro. Fakro. Okay. There you go. Actually, for this National Education Curriculum Reform Act, a necra to start the semester throughout the Congress. So 54 support it. None of the senators cares. The Republicans don't care too much. And the Democrats. We enjoy the Democrats. This education system within the U.S. of A remains one of the key factors of many American success in the country, giving millions the ability to learn more than they could ever before. However, in a strange act of reform, the Wallace administration has found it pertinent to push for reforms regarding the curriculum of the education that the children are receiving, with some apparently having said that a reinforcement of American ideals and belief is what is necessary for the success of this country's future. Thus, the National Education Re Curriculum Reform Act, or NECRA, has issued a set of reforms to bring education closer to the history and the United States' involvement in the world, as such as the Second World War, and the re-examinations of events such as the American Civil war. I don't see how anyone could dislike this. We're going to be teaching the youngsters about the strengths of the country and how they ought to be proud of it. What's wrong with that? President George Wallace stated in a press conference. Following the passage of the bill, many in the far right have congratulated the president for his senatorial success in the passing necro, believing that these educational reforms will promote the American spirit and encourage a greater devotion to the country than some within this country right now could ever hope to know. Meanwhile, groups of teachers have assembled in several areas to demonstrate their dissatisfaction with the act. Another educational policy of President George Wallace. Just because the president President has a knack for encouraging patriotism at every corner. It does not mean he can force that down every child's throat. Besides, challenging current systems are a pathway to growth, not an encouragement to stand against a country, argued one math teacher from Vermont, leading a group of mathematics teachers from whose jobs may become endangered due to the Necro's requirements, demanding more history teachers across the country. Now the children will be more patriotic. I love it. The academic base decided to develop begins to slowly worsen. <clears throat> well, maybe. But still going to buy 0.75, so that's not too bad. Not too bad. So you get the curriculum. It may be time to take to separate, but equal to its. Li uh, to, uh, 
My apologies. It may be time to take separate but equal to its logical conclusion. If we adopt a segregated curriculum, we'll make sure that every American is getting an, equal, an education tailored to their uh, <clears throat> people. Essentially, we'll make sure that the true blue Americans are getting a solid education, getting them ready to lead this great nation while not wasting too much time on our <clears throat> more subservient Americans, if you understand me, sir. Jesus. Looks a lot worse in northern states. I wonder if the MPP is going to actually be able to get elected in the next election, but we'll see. Better artillery, sign us up. As we drink a lot of coffee. Um, sure. These guys can have a bunch of money. There you go. Well, at least Iberia hasn't collapsed yet. And I say that, but they're probably going to collapse soon enough. What, one billion? And we will cut all that stuff down soon enough, so. You can keep slashing. Uh, actually, it's probably better to keep the civilian spending high and then cut all the construction stuff down low, but eh, whatever. Alright. Operational success is good. And the Yankee schools. Those darn Yankees, they don't know how to sit down, shut up, and leave the government work to the people who actually know what they're doing. They keep protesting the whole idea of segregated schools and they're really making us look bad. We're going to have to do something about these protesters at some point before it gets too far out of hand. We need to either double down on segregated education or ease up just a little bit. Nice. Oh, there goes those guys. I wonder when that mod's gonna come out for uh, TNO. That it's like uh, the ABC mod with Argentina, Brazil, and Chile, and yeah, I think even Mexico to a point. So sounds very interesting to me. Uh, is anyone killing each other? Come on, Iran, go kaboom, go kaboom. Um, at this point, yeah, let's let's severely cut the construction budget then. There you go. That's that's much better. Much, much, much. Second night of the long knives. All right, very cool. A lot of things are happening on screen, but nothing too important, really. Now we're back at 23 billion. Oh! Oh, okay. Yeah, this part, yeah, they gotta die there. I'm gonna assume... Oh, there it goes, the Shaw. I'm gonna assume that the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic is probably gonna win. Could be wrong. Hope they don't, but I don't see the Imperial Realm win for this one, but hey, let's see what happens. It's happy. Unhappy. It is what it is. Cool. The Yankee schools. So we gotta decide which way do we want to go. It doesn't matter at this point too much, but uh roll back segregationist rhetoric. Hmm. Segregation isn't for everyone. Devolutionary uh, devolved choice. Enforce segregation through law. I mean, really, as much as I think that's cool and all, well maybe not, actually, but like segregation means legal. Threat and action. We we're all about states' rights, and if the northern states don't want to do it, I mean, let's be real. Like then I don't want to be a hypocrite. So, we're going to roll back segregationist rhetoric. Even though I don't want to do it that much. Oh, crap. Well, it just doesn't make any sense. Because we are about states' rights. Through legislation, through all the union. Yeah, that, that yeah, I, I can't do that. I just, it wouldn't make too much sense. But the Iran Civil War, shall we? In recent years, we see Persia become a wide breeding ground for oppression and ruthless authoritarianism during the rule of Pahlavi. Persians from Berlin took give cause of cave in for the fragile political structure of the once broad nation. However, the people have started to speak out against tyranny and are shining opportunities developing itself right before our eyes. The National Front, formerly outlawed under the Shah's one party dynasty, has made a resurgence in local population, and every class seems to support it. Farmers, soldiers, and noblemen alike. In a surprising referendum directed at the parliament, the people demanded free elections, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and among others. As a result, over 200 freedom fighters dead, over a thousand wounded, angered at the slight, or the sight. Democratic politicians continue to speak out against the Shah, all while burning up a competent army, or building up a competent army in the southern half of the country along the Zagros Mountains and the Persian coast. A constitution was signed in the new Republic of Iran and succeeded only a few hours ago. Oh boy. Persia is the gateway through which the Caucasus, India, Central Asia, and the Middle East can be accessed. We also don't want the barbaric German eagle spreading its talents over the oil reserves in Iran. With a friendly government, any chance the Germans have filling up their panzers with the Persian oil is slim. If the liberals win this conflict, they could be our experiment with democracy in the region, a beacon of hope for the peoples of the Middle East. We must be hasty, the fragile democracy is already on the defensive. Oh crap, don't tell me that this is going to cancel. Oh boy, uh, I hope not. Uh, where are they? Oh, they're here. The Iranians have war. Cool. Can we actually send volunteers at the current time of this? Yes, I'm going to do that anyway, so. Alright, so Democratic Republic of Iran probably likes us. Ah, oh, Karim Sanjabi. That's probably the only group that we actually send. Guys, oh, yeah, good. How many can we send now? Two. That's not bad. We'll send two dudes. We'll take you and you, because you look pretty okay. 
Nice. I love the conflict. And they have an airbase. 400, huh? No. Oh, I guess 160. That's alright. Let's see. What, where, what and where can we send the dudes? Do we have any planes around here? No, there's some up there. Well, 160, huh? You can go 60 and get 100 fighters. Do we have 100? Hmm. Fighters, where are you? A lot of carrier planes. There's the cast in Indiana. Bombing wing. Oh. Goodbye. Send you guys over to Iran now. Very good. Very, very nice. Iran Civil War. It goes kaboom. Operation success is great. You guys are standing by. Head on in. Have a good old time. And the Yankee school system. Very nice. Hopefully we're going to win here. Do well. Because these guys are all going to kill each other off. So. And our boy should be there very, very soon. Cut down that debt. Uh, we don't have a lot of money to cut down the debt with. But that's alright. Um, Middle East maybe? No. No. Alright. Well, whatever. Nice. Very good. So where are our boys? There they are. Led by Besson. Who do we want? Who's got a good attack? Six, one, four. Here we go. Good. There we go. Alright, so we gotta attack these guys here, maybe. Let's see. Let's put these guys here. Maybe we can go attack right there, maybe. Let's see what happens. These guys are 20 combo with, so that's pretty good. Alright, very nice. And nope, we can't do that. Oh, let's go come over here and do this. Good. You guys are already over there. Nice. Can you actually win there? Yes, you can. Give him some time. Oh. Very good. Kill him off. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's a lot of divisions there. We're going to double up right here. Rushed. Now hold for now. Thank you, school system. And then we will do... Yeah, we got to roll back segregationist rhetoric. The voter base won't like it as much, but I'll placate the north. So, placate the northern states. Yeah, it just makes more sense. So, as much as we want to claim the pride and happiness in our administration's successes, one thing stands clear as daylight. The people of America will stand broken, divided, in each other's throats. Whether we like it or not, the country will be darned if we continue to wedge a divide, as it will only serve to promote more outrage and disunity. Even if taking action has been our greatest weapon in our success. Thus, in our knowledge of the impossibility of America's success without even a crumb of stability, we must roll back some of our more outlandish statements regarding our policies of segregation. Although our support base will become more confused over the official they voted for. Like, heck, we would allow the nation to break apart more than it already has and stop any process of healing. Bruised, besides, no matter what, we'll conclude to stand up, we'll continue to stand up for the state's rights against the federal government, even if we have to smother some of the flames. Push them for the right, promote cooperation, alienate some of your radical supporters. Because if we do this, I mean, it, I mean, I don't mind getting R&Ds into power after the walls, but he's all about states' rights, so it doesn't mean, doesn't, doesn't seem nearly correct if we did that by itself. Alright, so I've given it a little bit more thought as we're beating up some Iranian tanks here. But I think in the future, I'll play as Wallace, George Wallace here, of course, a few different times. Just because I want to see what happens. I want to do the party's plan and Wallace shall lead the way eventually. However, I would like to take another stab at him some other time. And we'll probably go down segregation belongs to the states, of course. Or maybe not. But I would like to go through and force segregation through legislation, as well as states campaign full. Just to see what would happen. So, as, as especially with this stuff too towards a steel belt versus a line of cotton. So I definitely want to try Wallace a few different times. So we'll go with like full gamer walls early on in like 65, I think. So in the future, at least on this channel, as long as I don't get demonetized, I would really, really like to try out Wallace a few different times. But the Yankee school ramp. Failure after failure churned up from the Congress to the Supreme Court. Wherever the president stepped, he found battle waiting for him, and wherever he sought to produce some change, he found his work slashed and burned by those unwilling to make their country better. If they want to fight me so much, the president thought, then I'll give him a gosh darn fight. He had decided that if it was going to appeal to the South, he was going as far as possible into the heart of it. Wallace prepared for himself on the muggy afternoon at Lee Circle in New Orleans, as the statute eyes of Robert E. Lee, a bless his heart, looked down upon him. And now President Wallace, the governor of Louisiana, said, eagerly shaking hands with the president, Good afternoon, you patriots who came down here in support of your wonderful state. Wonderful state. The crowd cheered on as the president shook his hand and laughed. Now, I know you're all dedicated citizens for coming out, so allow me to get to business for all of you. I am proud. I'm proud of each and every Louisiana in here. 
Proud as all heck for the tradition and legacy carried all the way from your forefathers who settled here. Together, together, you all honor them and keep in their image alive in the beautiful city you call home. However, not everyone in this country shares your passions. Actually, very few at all do in some parts of the country. Rather, they seek to call me a tyrant for my recent battles. For what, exactly? Wanting to keep the, uh, the darker-skinned folks out of your schools like you want and maintain order? For promising each boy and girl here a future for their patriotism? Rather than appealing to urban le leeches? Well, like heck I say. Because you know what? You have all seen the news, and I have to say it. I'm pissed. Pissed that those gosh darn yanks want to go around and let those afros in without a second thought just to put a thorn in your butts and mine? So with all that said, how do we fix this? Get mad. Get pissed. Get bad word and rage. Go out and tell your leaders you don't want this. Tell them you don't want that, that disrespect going on inside the very government of the U.S. I will guarantee your rights, your wishes, but gosh darn it, I need help, and so do you. Go to each and every senator, everyone across the Honorable South, and tell them that we need to fix this darn country before the North breaks it anymore. The governor of Louisiana stood behind the president, supportive of his uh, visit. And to encourage the people of Louisiana, but he couldn't help but feel the chills. The chills as his constituents roar. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. Ahead in what was meant to be a simple, encouraging visit. I can't segregate alone. Alright, buddy. Let's go. Alright, so the MPP looks a lot better than the southern states. And the Republicans and Democrats look better than the northern states. We get more political power. Not bad, not bad. And let's beat them up, because they deserve to get beaten up. We are here in Iran to free the peoples against Irani uh, threats and such. Cool. Uh, actually, we might be able to move in there pretty darn quickly. Maybe if things go well. Maybe not. Uh, let's take a double, double look here. Uh, no, it's all of you around. That's not too bad. Can we? Nope, we can't improve the, how many planes we got over here, which is totally a okay. You still might not be able to win. Okay, then let's hold. Well done, gentlemen. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, they're attacking us. Yeah, let them waste themselves on us then. Now we can win. Maybe that'd be very good. Move on in if you can. Actually, send only one guy since you guys are so fast. There you go. Just hold the line. Just hold the line. And actually, you just face this way. There you go. And circle these troops up here. That'll be good. Get Give them a few seconds so they can get some soldiers around here, too. So these guys are going to starve very soon. All right, they got enough soldiers up here. Help them out. Help them out. If you can. Uh, you probably start doing that. That'd be okay, probably. I don't care what it costs. Yep, we got the Iranian soldiers there. Help them out. Goodbye. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. You want to hold. You want to hold. Get up there. Get up there. And good. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Anything up here in America? Nope. All right. Let's come back to Asia. Support a lot of the stock movements because we can. Cool. Very nice. Very, very nice. Intensify volunteers. We kind of okay. All right. Let's see. You can probably help out right here. That'd probably be okay, actually. Nope. I guess not. Uh, actually, you just, can we go straight through there, maybe? Maybe, maybe not. You guys hold. Can you help support the attack there? That would be probably actually better. Yeah, fighting mountains kind of sucks. Not going to lie. Oh, you guys hold. Hold, 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 hold. I said hold, 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 hold. Give them some more time. And, okay, just let them leave. Take the airbase away so they can't use it. Well, yeah, if you can. Good. Let them attack us repeatedly, maybe. maybe not. Or maybe help support the attack. That'd be kind of good as well, right? And do yeah, upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. Skirmisher, meh. And, uh, William, no, he's aggressive assaulter, which I do like, though. So, All right, Tehran, shuffle off. Cool. Segregation isn't for everyone. Segregation isn't for everyone. The words which fell upon Americans, whether by ear, radio, or TV, no matter what. Segregation isn't for everyone were the words that shocked some, relieved some, appalled others, but mostly confused everyone. But more importantly, it was the words that President Wallace knew he had, that had to be spoken in order to patch the wounds dealt to the country after years of breaking apart. Even if we recognize the overstepping committed by the federal government down in the past, we cannot continue to allow a single issue of American society to tear the entire foundation apart. Rather, we will scale back the overall radical take of the administration and allow the people of the U.S. to solve the issue more calmly than the entire thing blows up in all of our faces. Placate the northern states, expect more segregation in the future, and fascist support goes up. Hey, it is what it is. Good, good, good. Cutting a deal and voting base. They're on, they're happy with it for now, but we'll see what happens. And uh, MPP needs more unity, which we can't do. And the RDs are willing to put aside their differences for now. Russian militarization would be kind of a waste. Do we have any debt? Yes, yes, yes. Nice. We won. And we're gonna wait for them to collapse again. So let's like get our boys home first, and then do some other stuff, shall we? Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, let's see, more authoritarian socialism support than Yaki support. What? 
Your Alka Daddy isn't loved by everybody? What's wrong with y'all? Our true devolutionary education. The American people chose President Wallace and his administration in an effort to ensure that states felt as though the freedoms from the government were ensured, specifically and especially in the time of crisis that we find ourselves in now. However, in this, we would only serve to break apart the nation further if we reach too far, while if we give in to every demand, we will lose any chance of success in regards to by losing our base of support. Thus, we must seek to employ the most middle-driven answer possible to be found. We will not take direct action to enforce segregation within our school systems, nor will we will give up on our efforts. We will stay true to our work. And giving the states the rights they want by allowing them to decide upon the issue of segregation of the state's education system themselves that way. The American people have a choice in their decision without the influence of the federal government to bog down the progress of the American individual. More cooperation, placate the North, which is a good thing. Alright, let's go and do this as well. Slash, um... Ooh, you know what? I do want to cut that. So, I'm going to actually spend more, which is actually probably a bad idea. But it's alright for now. It's alright. Nice, very good. Go ahead, because we can. A little bit of lag there, wow. Alright, not bad. The land doctrine, of course, is finito. 1970, grab some of that, because we love it, love it, love it, love it. Nice. Very good. Of course, it is July 20... Oh, it's almost August, actually, 1971, which isn't too bad. There's a lot of debt, though. Uh, can we cut this down? Um, every own state. Or, or, unless we're already at the bare minimum. Maybe we're already at the bare minimum, are we? Maybe we are. Yeah, we already are. Oh, well, maybe I should have slashed it. Whoops, my bad. Hey, get more construction speed, but whatever. Oh, there we go. Now they're killing, kill, killing themselves. Nice. All right, boys, we're going straight back. Yep. There you go. Well, operational success. Good. Oh, finally gets Morocco, eh? Good luck. Segregation isn't for everyone, and the true devolutionary education. Well, so, oh, yeah, we can read the next one. Why not? <clears throat> Devolve the choice. In our efforts to secure the rights of states for everyone in the U.S., and with it, please the supporters and opposition of segregation within the school system now that the citizens seem angry over the lack of details. Therefore, as to not lose a possible solution we've developed for the situation, we will give the states more of what they want, the segregation of water fountains, bathrooms, and public entertainment such as dances and ball games, and any other debate and segregation shall be opened up to the states that way. We are no longer uh, in any way betraying our values of states' rights, but also allowing the opposition of segregation to earn their right as well. Even if the choice seems favorable to the citizens of the U.S., especially within our su support base, support base in the South. It seems as though that former supporters of our administration have continued to grow disillusioned by our attempts at repair, and we may have a new foe at hand. Like in northern states, push the voter base for the right. More content. Oh, they'll be more content with the state, the state of states' rights? Nice. Yeah, I don't want to be too, seen as too hypocritical as of the moment. In the future, totally. Like, we're going to play as uh, Wallace again someday. Like, totally, 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 totally okay with that. Oh, good. You guys are killing each other. Cool. Well, Spain, you deserve that. Because I kept boosting you up and you chose not to do anything about that, so. You only got your stuff to blame. Let's go and come up here and make sure that we don't lose soldiers in Tehran. Actually, you guys could probably just go right on ahead and just do whatever. Yeah, I'm not even going to control them for now. Let's we'll see what happens. They're doing fairly okay. Actually, you know what? I will control you right here. Woo! Let's move on in, boys. Nice. Very good. Very good. Keep it up. What else we got around here? Um... Support parties in Iberian Wars? Sure, why not? Very cool. Alright, maybe that's not a great idea. There we go. Help out there, and then just cut him down there. Around. There we go, and cut him off. Actually, we might get in circle ourselves. That would not be very good, but whatever. Alright, those guys are gone. Very good. All right, just go there and then do that. Nice. Look how much strength they're losing. Ah, global range of operations. I love it. I love getting involved in foreign countries' affairs. Nice, 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 nice. Those things looking pretty bad. That's all right though. They come out signs. A man stands up on a soapbox in the busy uh, city square. His 
Yelling is often rambling and incoherent, but anyone who would bother to listen can get the gist. America's under siege, he says, not by fascism or imperialism, but by, li but by liberalism. These treasonous low lives seek to destroy America from within their low moral character, the cowardice in face of foreign aggression, and their tolerance of the black man and the Jew. Most passerbys pay him no heed, however, the small audience that does listen has grown slowly larger over the last few weeks. A black woman hums a gentle tune as she browses the store for her family's evening meal. Suddenly, a white man approaches her. He accosts her, telling her that her kind have no place in the store, spitting and addressing her with a slur. She stands her ground, and he attempts to assault her before he is dragged out, kicking and screaming obscenities by store security. The woman had once hoped things could get, could get better, but the racists have been more brazen this ever than ever lately. She goes back to her shopping, her tune silence. A pair of far right, or just, or just right wing, or right NPP senators sit at lunch at Dirksen Building Cafeteria. The conversation begins innocently, out of comments on traffic and the weather, and the elder senators bucks some new secretary. Oh. Then one begins to com commiserate on the party's changing course, longing for the days when he they can openly stand for true white American values. The other smiles and tells him that one day they might be able to gain, may, may, might be able to again. He's been having some talks with Yaki's people lately, and, then any, and the time may come soon when they can come out in the open. To the untrained eye, all is, well, all is well in America, but for those who know where to look, the signs are all there. There is darkness building in this country, and those who would welcome it grow more and more bold. The influence is still small, the things that carry on as they are for now, but how long will that last? The specter of hate lurks. All right, cool. Head on down here. There you go. Uh, I mean, you can beat him up if you really want to. You guys move so fast, it doesn't really matter to me. So move into there, perhaps. Yeah, that'd be good. There you go. Good, 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 good. Oh, you guys are up there. Nice. Salazar's victory in Portugal. Devolve the, ch the choice. Good, good, good. We might be able to finish up this war before... There you go. Nice. Uh, the next focus is done. Probably not. We'll see. Yeah. All right, cool. Anything else? Yes. Good, good, good. Eh, we might as well read the next one. Why not? Jim Crow's crutch. Our efforts, President Wallace's efforts, the administration's efforts, and everyone's efforts to provide the citizens of America with a greater bonus and choice in the direction of their lives within the U.S. has not been fought for in vain. Consistently, the federal government has taken up way too much power for themselves without feeling concerned for the average American. But throughout all of our efforts, we have secured each and every right possible for the American citizen in a bloody, exhausting war of attrition against a strong opposition to freedom within the U.S. For now, after all that we've done to serve them as the leaders of the country, the unyielding liberals in the North, uh, po poke and prod, calling President Wallace Jim Crow's crutch in an effort to portray backwardness rather than our administration's upholding of freedom and tradition. Is it not right? Have we not worked to simply try to maintain American society's morals and rights for the individual? The party's overcome. The legacy of George Wallace will radicalize the MPP. And maybe it should be radicalized. Oh, look, the people died there. Nice. What's the point of having a good time if everyone's not radicalized? All right, let's see what happens. We'll cut them down in the south. Sounds weird to say, but whatever. You guys should be able to win pretty darn easily. Integrated circuits guide and stuff. Cool. Nice, 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 nice. Remember, we are operating without uh, really any air support. I mean, yeah, we have fighters and stuff, but still. All right, put them down so they can't get encircled. Ah, oh, there you go. Very good. Go right on ahead, boys. Nice, overran as they should be. Actually, I'm going to have you guys just go up this way. Just go straight up here into Briz. There you go. Oh, straight to Briz. Nice. All right, they're done. At least they should be very soon. Uh, oh, where, where are you at? There you are. Cool. Kill them off before they can do anything, and they died. Great job, guys. We won in Iran. I love Iran. Best of luck. Well, we won. Uh, oh, well, they saw that down there, too. And Jim Crow's crutch. Very nice. Uh, they probably don't need to help take these guys out, so that'd be okay. I hope you like us. They don't really like us. Okay. The Iranian Civil War is pretty much done. Light infantry defense, plus 20%. That's pretty good. Nice. Yeah, we got to decrease that a little bit more, because all we're doing is just building stuff that we don't really need to build anymore. Um, there you go. You can do that, maybe. Uh, operational success is great. We have 13. 13, 12 active agents. Not bad, not bad. After that one, um... Oh, air... Well, we got that done in research, but we don't really need that anymore, so... Hmm. After this one... Oh, well, we could probably go back and do this stuff. Why not? From me to you. And he was running from George Wallace. Not bad. Might as well, right? Because I'd like to do that one, that one, and the Perth Conference, and then negotiate the terms, maybe. We can do business subsidies, but it's almost an election year, so we don't piss off too many people, right? Why would we need them towards Medicare? Restrict coverage. 
Encourage the oh Southern to meet Southern. Oh, it seems like we meet with LBJ then. Oh, there we go. Good. Slash. Now that's a lot. Now nah, that's nice. Thirty-two billion. Well, we we might not be able to get rid of the debt, but we got really close. Uh, the party's plan. Do you net the party in economic issues? Hmm. First set supporting senators. Segregated. Oh. Expensive. Massive support from the Dixie. Uh, Kratz. Yeah. Attempt to court over our northern far right allies. You know what? I want to do this, but I want to see the. You know what? We can start going down this way. It doesn't really matter too much, I think, just because of where we're at already. So, Iran is, of course, already done. Assist the liberals in the Civil War. More support American advisors, American equipment. Well, this seems like a waste of time now. So, grand strategy. Promise more American equipment. Promise more American soldiers to free the oppressed. New MIC contracts. Beacon of hope. Yeah, we've already won, so. I think in order to try to unify the support, we might just go with the party's plan, maybe. Uh, let's, let's do this one at least first, that one. Let's do that one first. Ooh, engineer company, nice. I think that time go on for now. It doesn't really matter too much, military please. Sure, why not? The Via Fani Massacre. Oh boy. Well, that's not good for you. Now I can't build anything. Wow. 106% of our. Oh, goodness. Oil, significant oil concessions. Open unity is extremely high, though. Civilian austerity. Wilbur Mills. No construction. Wow. Intelligence analysis, shall we? How's that beer looking? Like a mess. Like a big old mess. Well. And we'll gauge Central American interests. The nations of the world have endured long pains of suffering from the crushing weight of Japan's influence. In this, the countries of Central America have grown an economically difficult scenario, leaving them clawing to get any form of support possible. Larger nations such as Mexico continue to dodge away from the neutrality. However, smaller nations such as Nicaragua, Guatemala, and Honduras are able to be swayed in the interest of financial opportunity in their desperate scenarios and have been resorted to even accepting Japanese diplomatic action to aid themselves. Oh boy. No more. We won't allow neutral nations of the world to fold t more towards the Japanese bowling. Thus, we will offer all we can afford to make sure the closed countries of Central America will be warmed to the idea of a Pacific trading zone while also showing an act of good faith to the American people the administration's willingness to impede Japan's domination. Besides, Americans love tropical fruit, right? They should, at least. Out outcome of the Outback. Cool. Slash, cut that. Nice. President Wallace had been enjoying his day as a switch to foreign policy had been an enjoyable experience with a new rush of creativity to the office. However, the man needed most in all of this, uh, J. William Fulbright, happened to join him just as he was thinking of, of it all. Sir, we received a statement from Holt. Wallace took hold of the sheet as his eyes shot down and read. To George C. Wallace, President of the U.S., the Commonwealth of Australia has taken dutiful notice towards the productions of the United States Department of State in regards to the OFN's potential conference within the city of Perth. Having taken notice of the potential security and protectionist trade policy towards the members' economies, specifically in regards to the attacks on our economies by the Empire of Japan, along with our absolute steadfastness and loyalty to the OFN, we excitedly accept to hold the conference and will be directing all necessary resources towards the meeting. For a safe shield in the Pacific and the security of a most honored alliance between the U U.S. and the Commonwealth of Australia. Prime Minister Harold Holt. <clears throat> President Walls finished reading his finished his reading over the physically simple sheet which had been carried to his desk, yet yeah, the president was filled with boundless pride for himself and his administration. We've guided the president said, smiling towards the Secretary of State, who responded with a firm handshake from Perth onwards. Very, very good. And then we'll do the Perth Conference, and we'll finish that one up, and we'll do the party plan just so that we can start getting some unity between the CNPP and the far right. So, the Perth Conference. The Australians have kindly agreed to host our economic conference for the Pacific nations of the OFN, and representatives from the U.S., Canada, Australia, New Zealand are scheduled to meet in a few days in Perth to discuss the most ambitious attempt at trade liberalization in modern history. But, there's a great deal at stake here. Beyond just the bread and butter of tariff schedules, industrial policies, subsidies, non-tariff barriers, labor protections, and harmonization, business regulations, common working standards, all of these are which are trusty tools of a trade negotiator, and with their deft application one day hope we could one day hope to expand our trade compact to transform a means or means of survival into a means of strangle the Japanese Empire and its dominions. Oh boy, let's hope so. Let's really, really hope so. And then we'll go with this one. Business subsidies might not be bad actually. Um Dad, Supreme Court Justice, if you'd like to read about that, go right ahead. He's a conservative. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, then we can do business subsidies again. Hmm. Central America joins Perth Block, not bad. All right, very, very good. The White House Rose Garden was filled with dignitaries playing host to the assembled heads of state of the Central American nations invited to the Perth Block. Most little say to the matter, or were happy to play their part in deepening America's pernicious, 
embrace. Wholly dependent on American demand for agricultural exports and capital imports, many Central American leaders had long ago accepted America's political and military advisors and their politics as necessary for the development of their nations and their offshore fortunes. Not for nothing were Central American nations derided as banana republics, Guatemalan President Juan Jose Arevo, Arevo bitterly reflecting what this pact truly was. An oath of neo-feudalism pledging their crop to the landlord in his Washington manor while growing ever more dependent on American capital and machinery for foreign plantations. Arevo, Arevalo, Arevalo, had argued for years that the true national development could only come with the self-improvement of industry and culture, which necessitated telling the Yanqui that they would not receive the teeth of bananas today for the promise of local industry tomorrow, but it was all for naught, as he had been dragged to Washington under threat of intervention by his colleagues. Now he stood behind the American president, a pained smile masking shattered dreams. The weak suffer what they must, and the presidential election season has begun. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead, and we'll see what happens. Vote R&D. You fight for you and me, help elect the MPP. Well, I don't really know. We'll see what happens, but maybe we'll go with the N NPP just because we've done that for quite a while, so. All right, let's see what happens here. Oh, okay, so all 54, the Perth Conference, everyone, actually, almost everyone likes it, except for the center. 75% of the Republicans like it. 18 out of 20 Democrats like it, so I like that a lot. I'm cutting a deal, upcoming race. Uh, political landscape, let's see, increase unity. Ah, they're ready for anything now. Good, 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 good. Uh, the Deep South. Ooh, the Deep South. We might lose the Deep South. Let's do the Deep South then. We love the Deep South, don't we? Nice. The last dad is a good thing. And after that, we're going to go to the party's plan. Just help us out a little bit more. Like it or not, we're all in this together. The center block of the party has supported Medicare and Social Security for a long, long time. They can take the lead on this issue. After all, this is about unifying the party. So we should let the party collectively chart a course. We'll also see the floor of the center when it comes to do these new bills by letting the likes of Mari Newberger and Scoop Jackson to be the primary champions of the bill. We'll also demonstrate that he is willing to put party ahead of ideology. By doing so, he'll be able to reach out to center politicians, northern far-rightists, and even a few Republicans to secure their votes or his legislation. Of course, just because the center is leading the charge doesn't mean that he can't slip a few of his own policies into the bills. Which might be the wrong thing to do here, but hey, it doesn't matter. Wallace is pretty much done, and I've enjoyed his campaign thus far, so. The agreement has is fast-tracked. Jubilant cheers echoed across Congress, or Congress, as President Wallace and his associates celebrate the passage of the fast-tracked legislation. With a more arduous potential of endless debate, amendment, and the dreaded filibuster swept aside, the preparations for the vote on the PFTA can now go ahead without any impediment by Congress. A cheerful President Wilson spoke with uncharacteristic candor to the assembled journalists in Capitol Hill, promising that with the bill fast-tracked, he would do everything he can to bring about the establishment of the free trade zone as soon as possible. While this is not the final victory and the actual vote still needs to be secured, the Senate has agreed to be do the fast track that may serve as a positive indicator to the chance for the bill itself onwards to the final vote, which may or not go well for us, because, you know, far right might not like this. Uh, where is it? Wow, the Deep South, the, the House loves us. Great Plains, let's see, political landscape. Yes, we just saw that. We are united. Which is awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't want to help anyone else at this point. Nope. Where do we have the vote? Uh, in this voter base. Uh, they're unhappy with segregation now, which actually really sucks. Oh, we're going to go with conservative again. I don't like even bother reading that. So we don't need to see that. We don't need to see that. Upcoming Senate election season. Yeah. Uh, where's the Senate vote? I don't see the vote. Wallace and his voter base. Yeah. Cutting a deal. Staying the course. Cool. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. We've seen this several times. Solid campaign. Good job, guys. The Rockies. Yeah, it's going to be kind of wild. Let me read about the party's plan. Ah, that's almost done. Nice. Investments in Brazil might not be bad, but uh, I think we can wait. A wall of dollars. Subsidies for fruit. Banana Republic would be more friendly. Quote agreements. And they get you the terms. Eh. Pursue social security. Towards Medicare. Segregated security. Yeah, we need support from the Dexicrats, so support our uh, pursuit social security. We've got a lot of old-timers in this country who are still working in their twilight years. Who can blame them when they got no savings to retire on? But this makes the job market that much harder for youth to break into. If we want to keep the economy going, we've got to get these geezers out of it. Social Security could be just a ticket. We'll also begin drafting a Social Security package by proving the MPP is a friend of the age. This will boost their support among America's most frequent voters. There may be several opportunities to alter this bill to fit the interests of, Nash of certain members of our party as well. Yes, yes, yes. And this will help us with the MPP in the South as well, hopefully. All right, so Deep South doesn't like us. Yeah, they, they really don't like us, which is weird, but whatever. Great Plains, leaning, 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 leaning. Great Plains, let's do Great Plains once. Nice, very good. 
they don't like our uh, policy so far with lack of segregation. We did segregation stuff, but, you know, we can't be hypocrites. Ah, I guess technically we could be, but nah, we ain't gonna be. Nope, not here. Segregated security. Oh, after we read about military police, of course. Uh, let's grab some of that. Maintenance copies, why not? Alright. Social security isn't just for retirees, it also includes unemployment benefits as well. Therein lies a problem. The southern economy thrives on dirt cheap labor performed by black hands. Millions of blacks perform the farm labor or domestic help for a pittance because they have no other option to feed themselves, especially if they lost their jobs elsewhere. But providing them with unemployment benefits and old age pensions could leave them without, with enough money to refuse taking low wage, in, low wage agricultural and domestic work. <clears throat> This could throw the federal southern social and economic system into disarray. Thurman wants us to guarantee that that won't happen, and we have just a plan. We will exclude farm workers and domestic laborers from Social Security coverage. No work they perform shall entitle them to unemployment benefits or old age pensions, so they'll have no freedom to quit their jobs on a whim and look for better ones. This will be de facto segregate Social Security, since the overwhelming majority of those workers are black. It'll shore up support among our Dixiecrat base, but horrify the progressive wing of the party. Thurman is adamantly opposed to any social welfare programs that could threaten the Southern domestic institutions, and we take as, and will take as many votes as, we, as he can from us if we don't placate him. It's all about winning elections, if, if we can. We should be able to, but we'll see what happens. Polls are updated, cool. Leaning towards RD. Oh, crap. Yeah. Oh, cool. We'll see what happens. Oh, that's a toss up in the deep south. Yeah, the southwest. Yeah, I don't know, man. Marines, nice. Love the Marines. Oh, crap, guys. Come on. And then our northern. Adjacents. The far right block has always had two wings, Thurman's Dixiecrats and old school patent neoconservatives. Oh boy. The latter are far more business oriented, so it may take a little convincing in order to get them behind Social Security, but for the sake of the bill, we have to try. Wallace will meet with northern far right MPP letter leaders, Margaret Chase Smith and Spiro Agnew, to secure their support for the Social Security bill. By explaining its effects of getting the elderly to retire, he will show that it will enable more youth to enter the workforce and make enough money to drive consumer spending. With the entire block behind us, passing the bill should be easy peasy, which Agnew sounds very familiar. What's, uh, he was a person, I remember. Uh, if you like to read about the Ford debuts, the Mustang 2, please go right ahead. Um, this happens every campaign when you play as America, so. Deep South. Oh, boy, it's not looking good for us at all. Hmm. Ah, Great Lakes are mixed. Great Plains looking not too bad. Toss up, leaning, it's RD. Let's do the Rockies, maybe. Let's do the Rockies. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. Very cool. Because they had to cut back due to a lot of things. So the progressive wing reacts. It's Henry Jackson, Mr. President. Should I patch him through? Yeah, I'll take the call. President Wallace sighed deeply. It's going to be a difficult conversation. Hello, Henry. How are you? Mr. President, I'm calling about the Social Security Act. Will you actually force states to pay out different benefits according to the particular needs of communities? Do you take us for fools, Mr. President? We both know that's not an invitation to segregate Social Security programs. It's practically a requirement to. You're both. You're going too far, George. I was really hoping Social Security could be a subject we like to see eye on eye on, but the center wing is dead if we support this. I'm sorry to say, if I'm going to vote against this bill, and then I will encourage my fellow senators to vote against it as well. We'll do it without him. Well, we'll see what happens. Spend, spend, spend. Massively help us. Oh yeah. Oh, you want a pension? You got a pension. You lost your job? You ain't losing your house. Wallace is your friend in Washington and is here to bail you out out of a jam. Name your press and we'll foot the bill. Give me your poor, your tired, and your needy and we'll give them back on their feet. Wallace will offer incredibly generous entitlement payouts in his Social Security bill. The business-minded far-right leaders in the North will balk, but this strong bill will win us so many votes they can eat crow. Our friends in the North. Many people across America. And consider the North and South different parts of the country even after the Civil War. The culture is different, different slang words are used, different traditions and practices are performed. This is a northerner there is a northerner far right MPP and a southerner far right MPP. Like having two halves of a whole, they need to work together in order to function as one, with President Wallace at the helm of Southern Wing. MCS is a political sign of the northern and far right MPP, both the powerful figures in the party. Both of them need to come together to pass Social Security. Miss Smith, it's a pleasure to have you in the Oval Office. I'm glad to be finally reaching out to your entire party. It's we are not just a branch of the South, you know. Naturally, George, we're here to get this Social Security bill passed, hmm? A shiny piece of MPP legislation, able to help the man in the South or the man in the North. Wallace and Smith got along very, very well, discussing and debating intricacies of the bill together. What they settled on was a comprehensive compromise, something every supporter and legislator of the far-right MPP could agree upon. Well, Mr. President, we're set. I'll let my fellow Northerners, Northern legislators know about these changes, and we'll get it passed, I'm sure of it. Wallace grinned, grinned and shook Smith's hand. North and South working together for the good of the nation? That's what I like to hear. A united as one, nobody will break this bill. But unfortunately, that's going to conclude today's episode. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. We will hopefully pass Social Security before the uh, elections of 1972, and we'll see who we end up with. Thanks for watching. Have a great, tremendous rest of your day.